You're listening to the Baby Proof Your Homeschool podcast, the podcast that gives you the support and weapons you need for the battle of homeschooling with babies, toddlers, and preschoolers. I'm Jenny Shaw, your host, and you've got episode four. Our guest this episode is Dr. Melissa McCrory Hatcher, a published writer, part-time professor, and a full-time homeschool mom to three on the ground. She earned her PhD in English specializing in children's literature, and she and her husband stuck around 25 pins in their world map before starting their family through international adoption. Today, Dr. Hatcher will be sharing how she puts together her mother's morning basket and finds time during the busy school day to use it as part of her self-care routine. Hi, Melissa. Thank you so much for agreeing to speak with me tonight and, and be on this podcast. I'm so glad to be here. Could you take some time to introduce us to your family? Sure. My name is Melissa McCrory Hatcher, and I'm married to my high school sweetheart, who is a pastor. And I am the mother of four children. We became parents through international adoption. Our oldest son uh, would be eight now. He uh, actually passed away when he was three years old. We adopted him from Korea. And then uh, we were blessed with biological children as well. And our oldest son now is six years old. And our daughter is two, almost three, (laughs) but very, very two, if you know what I mean. And our youngest baby boy is three months old. Great. So what led you on the journey to homeschooling? How did y'all discern that was the path for your family? Well, my husband and I both went to private Christian schools. That's just kind of the path we thought we'd take. We didn't really think much about it. And we were living in Maryland and we got interested in classical education. Our school that I taught at played Bryn Mawr, who, which is a classical school there that Edith Hamilton, if you're familiar with the book Mythology, uh, that she was associated with. And so I kind of went on this rabbit hole one night uh, exploring classical education. And I thought, this is what we need. This is awesome. We really need to do this for our kids. Fast forward several years, we've got our first son and he's in preschool and we're so excited. And we start researching how much classical schools cost. <laughs> and I. Uh, <laughs> uh, Turns out, not only uh, did we not want to do that and put our money there, um, I thought I could actually do a better job. And then I found Charlotte Mason, and the rest is history. Wonderful. Love love Charlotte Mason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so tell us why mothers should take the time or make the time for self-care. It's so hard with little bitties. It's so, so hard. But, and I speak from experience now with my fourth little newborn uh, mm-hmm. in the crib upstairs, you have you are bleeding out for your children. It, it takes so much out of you. And it, particularly when you're homeschooling, right? There are literally no breaks, <laughs> literally none. <laughs> you are with your children 24 hours a day and children are holy sandpaper and are <laughs> scratching and revealing um, all, all kinds of things about your personality you don't want showing <laughs> and, and that we need to be working on and bettering ourselves. Um, but more importantly, just to be a good mom, to be a good wife, to be a good uh, church member, to be a good neighbor, you have to have something to give out. Um, So you have to fill yourself up to be able to pour out. And we don't really have a choice at this season of life. We are being poured out. And Mm -hmm. so you have to find short, brief ways to fill yourself up. So for example, right, I can't, I, I like to run, I say, you know, with finger air quotes, you know, Um, but I can't, I can't train for a half marathon right now. Like there's, I don't have time in the week for hours and hours of running. That's not going to happen, but I can run in a really short, right. I I like, okay, 20 minutes. Here I go. Boom, 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 boom. That's all I've got time for right now. And that kind of has to be enough. And I think that was when I was a new mom, that was so frustrating for me, right? I, and again, anytime you become a mom, you're you know losing all of that. Your selfish desires are kind of getting ripped away from you, <laughs> and how you want to spend your time. Um, but learning how to schedule nourishing, filling things for you 
is so, so necessary for the long haul, as Cindy Rollins would say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I tell my husband that uh, you can't fire a spent bullet. Mm, yeah. You have to have that, you know, propellant added back. My energy has to be there. It's so true. And I feel like, again, as a brand new mom, I would spend those few minutes. I can remember the first time because uh, we flew home from Korea on May 28th and I found out I was pregnant on June 28th. <laughs> so I was thrown into motherhood, literally, right? I've got this toddler running around and now I'm very, very sick all the time. <laughs> and I can remember the first the first day I just had it in my head. As soon as my husband got home from work, I just left the house and went to a movie just because I didn't, I didn't even know what to, what to do, how to fill myself up in nourishing ways. And right. other women would say, and like literally no judgment on this because maybe that worked for them, but they would say things like, go get your nails done. Um, go get a blowout, go eat shopping, right? All these things I would try and they didn't, they didn't work for me. Even, mm -hmm. even reading fiction, right. a certain kind of fiction, it wasn't filling me up and nourishing me in a way that was sustainable for the amount of pouring out that I was doing. Mm -hmm. So for those who don't know what it is, tell us about the practice of having a mother's morning basket. Sure, sure. Well, I think a lot of homeschool moms are, are familiar with morning time or morning baskets with all the work of Pam Barnhill and Cindy Rollins and Sarah McKenzie and others. I think there's a lot of talk about that and how to incorporate truth, beauty, and goodness into our homeschool day and being really intentional to not lose those um, riches and to lay this beautiful feast in front of our kids. However, I don't think enough moms are reclaiming their own education to use a, you know, classical education kind of buzzword, right? Mm -hmm. um, they're not really, exactly, right? Mother culture and the Charlotte Mason, right? They're not really feeding themselves in that way. And I think that's a huge shame. And I can't remember how long ago it was now, but a, a while ago, I stumbled upon Jennifer McIntosh's blog post, and she's since done a podcast episode about Mother's Morning Basket. And I can remember getting excited about this idea. And while reading her blog and ending it feeling very discouraged oh, <laughs> because no. yeah. there was no way I had time even, even if I were to get up at five, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would not have time to read six books before I'd have to feed the baby again. Yeah. Because and it's just... always sleep that suffers. That's not, you know, it's always the sleep that has to, to give. Exactly. I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you need sleep. <laughs> you need sleep, particularly with a baby. And we've constantly had a baby um, for the past seven years. So I, I, it just wasn't going to happen. It was not realistic. And that was so discouraging and frustrating for me. But then I went back to the concept of the morning basket and the idea of starting with one thing. Mm, mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Start starting small. With, yeah. Right. Start with one thing. And having to pick and choose which one thing is hard. Um, but the idea of keeping just my Bible, one nourishing book that's not even necessarily about motherhood or homeschooling, right? Mm -hmm. um, maybe mm -hmm. another facet of my life, one book and a journal, which I generally use as like a gratitude journal. And that's it. Those three things are on my nightstand. And I can generally carve out 10 minutes, 15 minutes maybe um, for those practices. And just by changing that one book out, right? Mm -hmm. For a while, it'll be a poetry book, then maybe a theology book, then maybe a book on an artist. Um, it has really, really fed me in a really profound way. And that's why um, with my little devotionals for Advent and Lent, that's what I kind of tried to create was uh, this idea of a mother's morning basket. So here is some scripture and here is one painting for you to look at. Right? Mm -hmm, here's some mm -hmm. scripture and here's one hymn. <laughs> right. right? Yeah, because have that's a really, right when, there. Yeah. Right. When you have little bitty kids, that is all you have time for. <laughs> that is that it. Is so true. Yeah. And that's enough, you know, um, through our grief journey. Uh, we have uh, really fallen in love with the practice of Lexio Divina. Mm -hmm. And that is another really quick way to get in 
a Bible study that still feels like you didn't just randomly open up your Bible to a proverb or a psalm because you felt like you were supposed to, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a really quick practice um, to feed and and contemplate. That would be the word I would use to, to, to really meditate on and contemplate scripture um, in a way that feeds you and nourishes you. Right. So for a mom that wants to use that as self-care, what practical tips do you have for her to get started? Sure, sure. I think the church has done a pretty good job of encouraging quiet time. You know, we're all kind of familiar with that phrase and it may come and go in certain seasons. And I feel like particularly when you've got a baby and toddler in the house and you've been up all night, it's very hard to be married to a time of day that anything works. Um, So What I generally do is I know I've got two or three windows. So if everyone is napping (laughs) or if I get up early or if I stay up late, so I will set three reminders in my phone, (laughs) which sounds insane, but it works um, because it just setting one reminder a day isn't going to work because if the baby's crying, the toddler's diaper has just exploded, right? And I'm that timer's going off. There's nothing I can do. Yeah. It gets bumped. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it doesn't happen. And then I feel discouraged. Whereas if I give myself a couple chances, right, I'm much more likely to get it in. Another practical tip is to be selfish. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah McKenzie talks about choosing things for morning time that light your fire. And I think that's so important, right? What is one class in college you wish you could go back to? What is one artist you've always wanted to study or a decorating, cooking, even like a self-help book, you know, like Brene Brown or, I mean, I think like for music, for example, like we get so caught up as homeschoolers is wanting to do the right thing. Um, and we focus on, you know, classical music, for example. Well, maybe you really love the Beatles and, so, you know, maybe that was a, a a connection with, you know, your parent and your parent just passed away. And, and this was a really important, you know, thing that you shared with them, this band, this love of this band, research that, right? Or a movie, you know, um, that again was really important because those things are a part of our cultural heritage as well, particularly when they're associated with, you know, happy memory from, childhood or adolescence, you know, that's going to be pouring all kinds of happy chemicals over your brain (laughs) when you're reading about it. Um, So that would be my, that would be another piece of advice is to be selfish and to pick something that you're really going to love, not that you feel like you should love. Right, right. Why don't I enjoy this? (laughs) Exactly. I feel like particularly homeschool moms, right, we're type A and, um, you know, we're all about reclaiming our own educations and we should be, you know, reading Shakespeare or Chaucer or whatever. Well, if it's five in the morning, like I am an English professor, but I don't want to read Shakespeare at five in the morning, right? (laughs) Um, So again, be honest with yourself. What really, right? What gardening book or, you know, maybe you want to read Joanna Gaines book. I don't know, like, but just pick one, (laughs) just pick one thing and then understand that you might not finish the chapter. Mm -hmm. Little chunks. Yeah, exactly. Because again, I think we can feel discouraged really quickly. Just understand like a Charlotte Mason educator when we're doing, you know, narration practice or something, you know, understand that we're just going to take this Maybe I only get to read two paragraphs a day. And yes, the baby is probably going to interrupt me. Someone is going to wake up. Someone is going to need me for something. And so again, go again with, if you set the bar really, really low, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) then you're going to get a rush and a feeling of success when you've achieved it. Don't go in thinking you're going to finish a whole chapter. That's just not probably going to happen. I hate to tell you. <laughs> right. Especially in that season, you know, oh, when, yeah. when you have all those little needs to be met, it, it's just unpredictable. And yeah, that's been a huge struggle of mine is just the unpredictability because I like to know what's going to happen. You know, I was the one yeah. who asked my mom, you know, like a week in advance, like what was, what was going to be for dinner on that next Tuesday? You know, you know, I want, <laughs> I want, I want to know where I'm supposed to be when and what I'm supposed to be doing. 
And you just can't do that when there are so many developing little humans around that need the majority of your attention. Yeah. And that that's what this season is about. We always try to use when we're feeding the baby and things like that for reading. Mm -hmm. And uh, I usually don't do it for like one of my uh, books all the time, just because a lot of other kids are around. But that might be a good time that they could uh, utilize as an opportunity for a, a mother's morning basket. Definitely. And don't neglect the power of the digital right? Um, it's so important that we take care of our bodies, that we stay moving. And so if you get, you know, 10 minutes, your husband will watch the kids or whatever, you know, you can go take a walk outside or go hop on the treadmill, whatever you have, um, or even just to stretch, to do some yoga, pop your headphones in, you can listen to scripture, <laughs> right? On your phone, you can listen to a, a little bit of an audiobook, and you can even keep you know, gratitude journals, there's all kinds of apps. Or if you want to have a commonplace journal right on your phone um, to jot down, you know, a beautiful quote or something from your reading that day. Mm -hmm. So don't mm -hmm. neglect that. Do you know what I mean? If you've got a lot of errands to right, run. Right, that multitask. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So what books do you recommend if, to get started in a Mother's Morning Basket? The number one book that I give if I see a mom who is just completely overwhelmed in the church nursery um, the, with me, uh, the, the number one book I always give is Long Days of Small Things, Motherhood is a Spiritual Discipline by Catherine McNeil. And it's so, so filling and so gorgeous. And it's about seeing your life as it is, <laughs> as it is, as a spiritual discipline. Um, and it's, again, because we have, she, she recognizes that we don't have quiet, right? When the church says, you need to do your quiet time, we do not have quiet or time. <laughs> we have neither of those things mm -hmm. in this season. Mm -hmm. And so how to see what you're doing already by washing your baby's feet, it, that's such a spiritual act, right? Um, try to think about the things you're already doing. Um, again, because we have so little time to ourselves to stop and feed ourselves. I think that book was a real game changer um, for my joy for how to get through the day. I think Liturgy of the Ordinary, Sacred Practices in Everyday Life by Tish Harrison Warren is another great, great resource, again, to think about making your bed in the morning and and driving your car and getting stuck in traffic, right? All of these things can can teach us something. And I love, she, again, because she's talking about the, the liturgy, she's talking about the liturgical calendar. And she tells this hilarious and very appropriate story for us tonight, story about going <laughs> to her priest. And she's just, I think she's had her second baby or something. And she says, I don't know what to give up for Lent. I'm nursing and I've got this toddler. I don't know what to give up for Lent. And he says, um, you're living Lent. <laughs> you don't need to give anything up. <laughs> you're in the desert, honey. You're in the desert already. <laughs> well, instead, he tells her, he tells her to practice enjoyment and pleasure, right? Oh, wow. Figure, That's powerful. Isn't that powerful to think about? I had a spiritual director tell me once, tell me, you know, that when you take a bath, right, think about your your bad day, your sinful nature, all that right being being cleansed from you. Um, mm -hmm. To think about right, what is it that's beautiful that you enjoy? Going back to the idea of being selfish, right? That this is a season for you to think about what fills you up and to think about joy. Um, it's not necessarily a season to give things up because we are bleeding out all over the place <laughs> for our kids. Mm -hmm, so I, that mm -hmm. was such a huge, huge takeaway. So those are the, the definitely top two books I recommend for moms in this difficult season. Well, I love how they're, they're both about changing your perspective, cleaning that lens that you, you look at the world through. Exactly. And, you know, just helping you or reminding, you know, most of us know this. It's just that reminder, and, and I know I need it often, that what we are doing, all those little menial things are actually corporal, you know, and spiritual works of mercy. Exactly. That, that do have value, you know? I'm like, oh, I'm sweeping this floor again, <laughs> you know, the third time today because somebody stepped on a pack of crackers, right. you know, that, right. that they broke into the pantry to get to. Yeah. 
Yeah. How is this anything? But it is. Yeah. You know, it's humility. It, it's just so many positive virtues I need to work on. <laughs> <laughs> and I like these two books in particular because there's tons of books about motherhood, but these two women are still in the thick of it. Um, whereas mm-hmm. I feel like I, I love Mere Motherhood by Cindy Rollins um, and Voskamp, even her works uh, talks about, right, elevating like Brother Lawrence, right, this idea of, you know, doing the dishes and what have you. But again, these two women in particular in long days of small things and liturgy of the ordinary, uh, I don't know. They just speak to me on a different level. So I, I highly recommend those. Now, for specific other books that I would put in your basket or by your bedside table, if you could only pick, right, one thing, um, it kind of depends on the category and what you're looking for. You might want to start with poetry because <laughs> we're all <laughs> list checkers, right? We get frustrated when you can't finish the chapter. Whereas with a book of poetry, it's going to fill you, give you one quick, deep thought. And it's, it can be really filling. So there's all kinds of anthologies. My favorite would probably be Caroline Kennedy's. She's got a collection just for women that's really beautiful. And it goes through the seasons of a woman's life, um, you know, falling in love and so on and so forth. Um, all the way to the end. And it, uh-huh. that's really, really touching and can kind of, if you're petrified by poetry or don't know where to start, um, that would be a good one. Another one uh, would be Even Boland. She's an Irish poet who writes about being a mom in the suburbs. <laughs> I mean, and oh she my. takes this, it's so specific to what our lives are, but she uh-huh. elevates it with these classical illusions and what have you. Um, it's, she is such a gift. She's so, so beautiful. So that Irish poet, I would definitely recommend her. Some others that people probably have heard of would be Lucy Shaw, wonderful mm-hmm. Christian mm-hmm. poet. Madeline the Engel has a book of poetry. You might know her from A Wrinkle in Time. Christina right. Rossetti. Um, and another one I just found, and her poetry is a little um, PG-13, maybe R, because <laughs> um, I don't like to leave it around if you have much older kids, but um, Marie Howe is another poet who uses liturgical imagery. So she has a book called Ordinary Time, like the ordinary time of the church year, and a book called Ma- that sounds so interesting. Magdalene um, is another book she has, how she associates with Magdalene. And again, she has lived <laughs> this poet <laughs> and unfortunately has been through some traumas and and that's kind of how she's approaching the lens of the liturgical life uh-huh. but I, I I think she's interesting I, I would check her out so that was would be my my poetry recommendations and just real quick like a couple of theologians that aren't too heavy I think when we hear the word theology we all kind of shut down um <laughs> but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Henry Nowen has uh, beautiful short books that are topical. Um, so again, on grief, on home, on on everything. Barbara Brown Taylor is another just amazing uh, woman writer today. An altar in the world and learning to walk in the dark are two of her titles. And Richard Rohr would be another one uh, if you're interested in contemplation. Thomas Merton, of course. So those would kind of be places I would start. And again, be selfish, right? Think about what interests you um, and and kind of go that route. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So is there a preference for fiction or nonfiction or should we be steering towards one thing or another or is this really like a de- delight led practice? I think particularly for this season, it needs to be delight led, okay. right? Going back to what that priest said, mm-hmm. right? We are living Lent, right? We don't need to yeah, um, yeah. Uh, beat ourselves over the head. <laughs> Again, with books that we think we should be reading mm-hmm. uh, to make us, you know, more thoughtful, uh, more spiritual, fill in the blank, right? I, I don't mm-hmm. feel like that's necessary in your mother's morning basket right now. There will supposedly come a time for that. I don't know when it is. <laughs> I haven't got- when I'm 80, <laughs> that's it. <an> right. <laughs> I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> um, right, right. They keep, all these moms keep saying that time will come. I don't know when it is. Uh, there will supposedly be a time 
for for those deep tomes, but now <laughs> isn't really the time, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Oh goodness. So what I heard is that this is your free pass to to read uh, the Hunger Games series. That's Heck what I heard. yeah! That's what I <laughs> Yeah, there are days I feel like I'm living the hunger yes, games. Exactly. You might learn like something. You might learn right. something. It's right when the children gang up on me. <laughs> it does feel a bit like Lord of the Flies or Hunger yes, Games. So yeah. I don't know. It, it could be helpful for you. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so do you have any final encouragement for moms out there that are, you know, in the trenches and they they just need some support? Definitely, definitely. Again, start small, Bible book journal, right? That's all you need. You don't need something big and elaborate. Focus on truth, beauty, and goodness, but be selfish about it, right? Something that's genuinely going to bring you joy. And also, I want to end with this quote from Long Days of Small Things, where she talks about this idea of a spiritual practice, because that's really what this is is this is a daily liturgy we want this to build just because it's not the same time every day because of our chaotic lives right now with babies and toddlers it doesn't mean that it's not a ritual because it is it's happening every day that's our goal and this is how she phrases it just as my children rehearse scales and ball dribbling there is value in practicing spiritual disciplines A life spent cultivating prayer and service, meditation and worship, fasting and celebration will reap a harvest. Our mommy days are fertile ground for this practicing because our mundane moments are ripe with opportunities to lose our grip, our patience, and ourselves. (laughs) And a little later, she says, and I'll finish with this, the purpose of spiritual exercise, which is basically what a mother's morning basket is has always been to infuse daily life with opportunities to practice placing our eyes on God rather than on ourselves. Wow. Okay, well, Melissa, tell us where we can find you. Sure. I am on Instagram, YouTube, and my personal website, and they're all under Dinner on a Bunsen Burner, which is a reference to my favorite writer, Madeline Langle, uh, the mom in A Wrinkle in Time in that series, uh, was a scientist and stayed at home with her kids and worked from home and had dinner cooking on her Bunsen burner and thinking big ideas. And <laughs> uh, that's that's kind of who I always wanted to be. And it's who I get to be now, which is awesome. And uh, upcoming projects, I've got my Lent and Advent devotionals, which are Mother's Morning Baskets. So I've done all this kind of work for you and called um, just one beautiful thing every day along with a scripture reading. And those are called Ordering Our Affections. Oh, great. Order of Morris. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ordering Our Affections. And those I've got one for Advent and Lent. And I am finishing up a grief work, which is also in verse form. Again, if you're looking for a short <laughs> poetry. Um, about uh, mothering uh, through the grief process and after the grief process. And I've actually just uh, commissioned a couple pieces from a liturgical artist. Uh, so it'll be kind of an illustrated, uh, Excellent. yeah, cool looking work. So can check that out in the future as well. Mm-hmm. I'll definitely be looking for that. Yeah. Thank you so much for just sharing your wisdom with us tonight and giving us another option, another avenue to take care of ourselves so we can better take care of the others in our family. You're welcome. And y'all, you can do it. (laughs) Just a few minutes a day, you can do it. You can find links to the things we mentioned today in the show notes at barefootabby.com forward slash BYH4. You can also submit questions for personal troubleshooting there. And if this podcast is a blessing to you, please take a few seconds to share it and leave a review on iTunes so it is easier to find for our other sisters in arms. Thank you so much for listening. And until episode three, just keep thriving in the trenches. And remember, you are not alone in this fight.